Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's SS454 LS6. Yesterday I was driving around in the 71 Chevelle and I realized in certain situations the, the car was running a bit rich. Now I'm running a Fitec EFI. If you haven't seen any of that uh, in previous videos, go back and watch some of them. Um, but I'm thinking, why don't I go ahead and try tuning it out? I have a video about advanced tuning, so and I really haven't done any additional tuning since then, so let's go drive around, do some data logging, and let's see if we can fix some of this. Even got my track mate set up here so I can see the RPM better. Everything is up to operating temperature, we can start our data logging. Now that rich condition that I saw was under heavier loads, so that's what we're going to try to replicate today. So I just came back from my drive and I gotta say it ran very very poorly. I can't remember it running this badly for a long time So let's plug it in to our USB And we'll say open mass storage And we'll go to log file dashboard dashboard 5 And okay I don't even see anything and then what you always do is you highlight row two, go to window, freeze, and then we'll scroll down here. So immediately, there's a higher throttle here. And look at that. Rich. This is the data log that I collected from driving around, and quite quickly you can see it got too rich. So second gear here wasn't too bad, but third gear, 10.6 to 1. Fourth gear, 10.6, 10.4. Uh, when it was asking for 14 to 1 target AFRs, it was as rich as 10.4. So that's not good at all. Uh, scrolling down right here, I think it was in third gear, and I went from 7% throttle to 74%. And uh, again, 10.4 to 1. Uh, you can see the system was trying to lean it out, which is good, but my AFR trims are maxed to uh, 20%, which is why it only did 19.5. In any case, it just wasn't enough. The The base VE tables too rich. Uh, I also noticed that upon that initial hit, um, I went from a target of 14.1 to 12.6 and it just didn't richen it up enough. So it didn't seem like it was dumping enough fuel in there. Uh, same kind of thing just happened over and over throughout the, the driving around. So even though this was not, you know, max throttle, it still got too rich. So 10.8, 10.8. Uh, interestingly enough, it stopped leaning it out here. I'm not sure why it would do it here, but not here. Uh, but that's what happened. Um, let's see. There's another one. 9% throttle to 80%. And again, a little bit lean on the hit. And then way too rich. <laughs> you know, I, I could feel that 10.5. It's like the engine just stopped pulling, so it didn't like it. Now, when I'm going to do my tuning, which this whole 
investigation here suggesting that the uh, the whole base VE table needs to be leaned out for the most part and maybe a little bit of fuel added on the Excel pump but I am looking at my map and I'm looking at the RPM and that's happening and that's where I'm going to make my adjustments. So last night I went to play with the tune through my Phytech EFI ProCal software and it was not working at all. Uh, in fact it didn't even look like this. It looked like this when I load the program. Um, uh, I didn't have this information along the side at all. Once I finally figured out how to get this back, I would load up information and this would happen. I would have blank readings, so the, there would be no data at all. Uh, so I reinstalled it multiple times. I uh, transferred files over from my desktop, which was working, to onto the laptop. That didn't fix it um, until I was suggested to load it in a compatibility mode. So what I ended up having to do is you go to your EXE and there we go properties compatibility we're going to say run and say Windows XP Service Pack 3 apply OK and then yes <clears throat> now when we click on something the information is there. So there you go. I did also have to reinstall the K-Line adapter. I swear to God I have to do that every single time uh, I don't use it for a, a long period of time. Like, I, don't, I just don't know what's up with the software. But I got it working again. So now we can go ahead and play around with the tune. Okay, so what we're going to do is plug this sucker in. And then turn the ignition on and we're gonna say switch to k-line adapter and then this will talk to it it should say connected like so and then what I'm gonna do is go uh, calibration and read ECU cal It should load up all of the information. Okay, so now we go target AFRs. This is what we currently have. All right, so a couple things we're gonna do. First, I notice I'm getting a, uh, a fault code. So if I go to, it's in my fans. Was it basic settings? Apparently I have my fans turned on. Uh, fans enabled, we don't want that. Can I disable over here? Disabled. Disabled. Okay. And then we're going to say send to ECU. The other thing that uh, I'm realizing is uh, actually, I'm going to close that down. Is I went into the VR tables, which is under fuel control. VR2. And I compared these uh, VR values right here with what I had before, and they're definitely lower. But I checked on my VR Cam 1, and rather than adjusting everything in my Cam Table 2, I'm thinking, why don't I just switch over to Cam Table 1? I'm just going to adjust these down here to match basically these 1800 numbers because they, they seem to be working good and then I will adjust from there so I think that's what I'm gonna do rather than keep playing on the cam 2 this one's already lower fuel so let's do that so I got all the information put into my cam 1 VE table you can see down low in the lower RPMs it's basically just moved over one to one uh, and then I'm just gonna see what the cam 1 fuels in this section are going to do for our tune. So I'm going to say send to ECU. So for changing the which cam setting to go through, which VE table, I think I'm going to do it in the handheld. I mean, I'm guessing I could do it here, but eh, I think I'm just going to do it in there just to be sure. Uh, but I am going to go to, uh, where is it? Fuel transients is what I want. Okay, Excel pumps. So I want a little bit more 
fuel at lower RPMs. Okay, this bloody GoPro keeps shutting off on me. So we're going to add that a little bit. What else is I going to do with that? I'm going to go down to this one. Let's say 8 there. And this one I want to go 23.5 like that. So we're just add a little bit more fuel when I get on the throttle. And I think that's all I'm going to uh, change for now. And we'll see if this does anything for us. So I'm in the handheld and this is where I'm going to change from cam 2 to cam 1. And then I will say, okay, send to ECU. That should be good, but we're going to go send to ECU just in case. So after the changes, things definitely felt a lot better and the data logs seem to support that uh, we are making some improvements. So, you know, third gear, 12 to 1. Fourth gear, still a bit rich. Um, part throttle, uh, you know, hit here. So we're asking for 13, so 12 to 13. Uh, what else do we got? Here's a, a full throttle run. So we hit the throttle. Uh, still a little bit lean off that uh, first jab of the throttle. Uh, and then um, uh, it, it richens up quite a bit. But, you know, no longer was I seeing this 10.4, 10.6. It's 11.7. You know, well, here's 10.7. So it definitely got a little too rich in, in fourth gear. But so it needs to be leaned out a little bit more. But we are definitely headed in the right direction. So I'm making some progress. The Cam 1 VE table is definitely an improvement over the Cam 2. And I leaned it out just a little bit more, so I'm going to try this one. But the other thing I want to try, and I don't want to go too crazy with this, but if I go into my fuel transients, according to the definitions, the decay is how long it's pushing in fuel and a larger number will shorten it. So all these are in the negatives, you can see that. So, so if I go to say negative 30 and negative 15, that will shorten the amount of time that it's dumping in fuel. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. So we'll go negative 22. And that should be all. So we did a, a couple small changes, send to ECU, and we will see if that does anything for us. So this is the data log from the final tune adjustment that I made. And while it's far from perfect, it is so much better than it was before, uh, which makes me happy. So as you can see from the logs here, I got into the throttle and you know, we're seeing 13, 11, nine. Uh, this was third gear, 12, five, 12, three. So that's really good. Fourth gear always seems to get a little richer in fourth gear. Not sure if I can tune that out or not. Um, but yeah, any time I kind of got on it, it seemed to be no more huge, rich bogs that I had before, which is really encouraging. So again, you know, a little bit lean there, but 11.4, 12.2, this is fourth gear, 12.1. So better than it was before by a lot. So I think I'm going to let the, the computer learn it a little bit and I'll drive around and see if it can kind of fill in the gaps that, you know, I, I didn't tune out, but I'm sure I got a lot more tuning to do, but whatever that, that can be done in the future. So I'm excited that I got it a, a lot better and I encourage anybody to go out and, and play around with their tune up and try to make theirs better because, you know, you can find a lot of performance in your tune up. Just make sure you're watching your RPM and the map that it's, uh, uh, or actually, I should say that the other way. Watch your map and the RPM that it's happening at and adjust from there and do small adjustments because you don't want to go too crazy and, and damage something. So, uh, yeah, if you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe, and thanks for watching.